All right, we've now moved on to logarithmic equations and functions. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the domain. So I want to remind you, as you think about the graph of a log, remember if we think, think about the little x, y axis, it looks something like this. So think about that domain. That domain has to be positive, and it can't be zero either because that's where the asymptote is. So think about setting what your input is. So in this case, 2 minus x has to be greater than zero and solving that inequality. In this case, while you could subtract 2 and then divide by a negative x, remember whenever you divide by a negative, you have to flip the sign. I think it's actually easier to add x to both sides. So 2 is greater than x. Since it asks, oh, I guess it doesn't ask. That's the, um, for interval notation. So you could leave it like that, or you could write like, um, in this case, it's saying x is really less than 2, right? So negative infinity of 2 would also be an equivalent answer there. Okay, for this next one, we're setting x squared plus 9x plus 18 is greater than 0. So you want to ask yourself well, what multiplies to 18 but adds to 9. As you think about that, the two answers are 6 and 3. So as you solve those, you would get x equals a negative 6 and a negative 3. However, we have to kind of decide, that's when the number line comes in handy, right? Which part of that interval or those intervals is positive? So whether you think about it graphically or you think about your two factors of x plus 6, x plus 3, and you plug in something like negative 7, so we get a negative and a negative, so this is positive. We plug in something like negative 4, so we get a positive and a negative, so this is negative. We plug in zero, we get a positive and a positive. Remember, you can also think about this as a quadratic that opens upwards, right? So what part is positive? It's the two outsides. Therefore, the answer is the left, far left and the far right. It is not equal to, so those are open circles. So we're saying it's from negative infinity to negative 6. Union, and uh, negative 3 to infinity. Okay. This next one is a good review of what we just did in our last unit. Think about where your x-intercept is. Your x-intercept is when the top is equal to 0, so x equals 0. And your vertical asymptote is when the bottom equals 0, so when x equals negative 1. Those are the two numbers that you want to consider on your number line down here. And then same thing, I would put the two factors of x and then x plus 1. Plug in something like negative 2, we get a negative and a negative, so it's a positive. Plug in something like negative a half, we get a negative and a positive. Plug in something like 1, a positive, a positive, so we get a negative, positive. So once again, we want the two outsides because we want where the um, interval is positive. So we're going to have from negative infinity to negative 1, union 0 to infinity. All right. Let's talk about graphing a log. So first of all, in general, the domain of a log is 0 to infinity. And then I would consider any transformations that have happened. Um, find the x and y intercepts, if any, and then use transformations to graph it as needed. You can always identify additional points. And then the vertical asymptote usually is at x equals 0. So it's usually the y-axis. Um, however, you know, if there's been a sh shift right or left, that could change things. So in this case, we have log base a fourth of x. We're basically saying to ourselves, if this is helpful for you, well, this was originally decays, so it looked like that. So now, as you reflect it across this line, y equals x, it should actually start from the top and come down when it's a decay log. You can think about it that way. So the domain, since we haven't shifted at all, is still 0 to infinity. Your range is negative infinity to infinity. That hasn't changed anything. Even your vertical asymptote is still x equals 0. And these I should have wrote vertical, not horizontal. My bad. Sorry, guys. As for the x-intercept, think about setting 0 equals log of 1 fourth of x. So then we could rewrite this. We're saying, hey, x, um, sorry, 1 fourth. Or you could put zero on this side, one fourth to the zero power, sorry, equals x. So that's one equals x, right? 
some of you, I think, like better writing it with the zero on this side, because then you can do like your one fourth the zero equals x. So x does equal one. Here for the y intercept, saying zero, um, plugging zero in, log of one fourth of zero. Remember, we can't have zero as an input. It's got to be something greater than zero. So the y intercept does not exist, which makes sense because there's an asymptote there. So if you want to think about it, you've got your asymptote here, right? And then beyond that, we've got an x-intercept at 1. If you wanted to check just like one more point, you could plug in like even on your calculator, you could just be like, hey, log base a fourth, um, log base a fourth of like, let's just say like 3. And then you do like log of 3 divided by log of a fourth. And on your calculator, that will approximate it for you. And it will give you a decent idea. Hey, it's like negative 0 0.79. So it gives you an idea that like, hey, we're really close to negative 1 there. If that helps you out and you're not quite sure what the graph looks like. But it will kind of come down like this. All right. Um, let's try one more. And then I think I'll skip to like some solving um, and you can look at your answer key for C. So let's do um, B together. So on this one, we're now saying, hey, log base two. I always think it's good to kind of just start off and be like, hey, well, what do I know about log base two? Or just two to the X, two to the X is gross. So it looks like something like this. Therefore your log, when you reflect it, will actually start low and kind of come high. This one though, however, when we're inside the parentheses, that shifts it the opposite horizontal, so it's going to go left one. So that will influence our domain. If we move the, all the x values left one, we're going to now be at negative 1 to infinity. However, the range won't change of negative infinity to infinity. And these are vertical asymptotes. If we usually have x equals 0, but we shifted it left one, we're now at x equals negative 1 as our asymptote. Okay. X intercept, so 0 equals log base 2 of x plus 1. Or actually, I think people like writing it over here, so I'm going to do that. So 2 to the 0 equals x plus 1. 1 equals x plus 1, so x equals 0 is our x intercept. Okay, now let's do the y intercept. Log base 2 of 0 plus 1. So log base 2 of 1. It's saying, hey, 2 to what power equals 1, or you can always do like log of 1 divided by log of 2 on your calculator, and you also get 0. So therefore, what that's saying is, hey, you know, my graph crosses right here, so the x and y intercept are the same. We've got an asymptote here at negative 1, and we know that it starts low and goes high. But if, as we said in like the last one, if you ever want to find like one more point, I could do something like do log base 2 of the number 1 and do log of, um, or, yeah, of 1. And then it would be like, but it's 1 plus 1, so it would be like log base 2 of 1 plus 1. So log base 2 of 2. You can think about those canceling or saying like, hey, 2 to what power gives me 2, and it is 1. So this graph, you can find some points, and they're not as nasty as the last one. They would give you more integers. Okay, I'm going to skip C, and you guys can look um, at the answer key for that. But if you kind of wanted a general idea of it, it does go through these points and look something like, um, so that wasn't a very good drawing, but something like that. Okay. So let's actually look at solving some of these logs. We basically did this last time as well. So let's choose like um, two of these at least to do. So let's look at um, this first one. So remember we want to combine the log. So we'd have like log of x plus 5. In this case, it's subtracting over x plus 2 equals 2. There is no base here, so remember that's base 10. So we're saying, hey, 10 to the second equals x plus 5 over x plus 2. Up to you how you want to do it. I think a lot of you probably like cross-multiplying. So that's really saying 
just so you know, 10 squared is 100. So we're really saying 100 times x plus 2. So that's 100x plus 100 times 2 is 200 equals x plus 5. I'm going to subtract my x, so 99x plus 200 equals 5. 99x equals negative 195 when I subtract 200. So x, therefore, equals negative 195 over 99. If you wanted to simplify that, that's negative 65 over 33. Okay, let's try. Um, let's, I'm going to give you the answer to b. b is 4 thirds. And let's try c together. So this one, once again, we're combined, but if it's adding, we're going to have to multiply. So we're going to have x times x minus 4 equals natural log of 5x. Notice on this one how there's a natural log on both sides. So it wouldn't make sense, kind of like without changing, rewriting the base. If these are equal, and this is both natural log, we can cancel the natural log, and the input should also be equal. So x times x minus 4 equals 5x. So we get x squared minus 4x equals 5x. Let's subtract the 5x. So we get negative x squared minus 9x equals 0. This is a factoring problem. This one you may not be as familiar with, but usually when you have variables on both of them, um, and there's just two, there's a binomial, we're going to factor out the GCF, which in this case is x. So we get x, and then x minus 9 equals 0. So therefore, the x out front means x equals 0. x minus 9 means that x is a positive 9. But remember, we got some restrictions. We cannot put anything, and what we put in has to be positive. So 0 is not one of the answers. It is just x equals 9. Okay. On this next one, I think you got this one as well. Maybe I'll just start you off. And remember to get rid of the 9 fifths. I would probably just multiply it by the reciprocal to make it cancel. But then I think you've got it. The answer is x equals 1 over 32, or if you prefer, 1 over 2 to the fifth. 